In this video, I'll go over the Apollo 13 mission and the incident that transformed our approach to space exploration. This mission is a moment in history that we need to talk about seriously. So I've brought memes, dreams, and images of the whole thing to help tell the story. We'll dive into the intended mission, what went wrong, the ingenious solutions, the consequences, and the lessons learned. So. What was the mission? The Apollo 13 mission was the seventh crewed mission in NASA's Apollo space program and was supposed to be the third to land on the moon. The Apollo 13 crew went through over 1,000 hours of specific training, averaging more than five hours for every hour of the mission's 10 day plan duration. Each prime crew member spent over 400 hours in simulators for the command module and lunar module at Kennedy Space Center and Houston. Flight controllers also participated in simulations to learn how to react in an emergency. The Apollo 11 astronauts had limited geology training due to the higher priorities like, I don't know, landing on the frickin' moon for the first time ever. So Apollo 12 saw increased geology training, including field practice and simulated scientific communication. The main objectives of the Apollo 13 missions were to perform more geological inspections and sampling at the landing site, deploy and activate LSAP. It stands for Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package and consisted of a set of scientific tools that are used for their respective research develop compatibility to work in the lunar environment, obtain photos of the exploration sites, the moon from orbit, and the return journey back to Earth. Mission planners decided that beginning with Apollo 13, the command service module would bring the lunar module to low orbit, and then the landing attempt would begin. This would increase the hover time during lunar descent. This increased hover time provided astronauts with more flexibility and control as they maneuvered the lunar module to find a safe landing site on the lunar surface. The astronauts practice EVA procedures, sample gathering, and equipment use in their spacesuits, including training in simulated microgravity on the Vomit Comet. Lovell trained for the lunar surface descent by flying the lunar landing training vehicle. As previous mission commanders valued the experience and convinced NASA management to keep using them. After all this training and procedure, the mission launched on April 11, 1970. And once the rocket was launched, two separate issues were about to occur. Pogo oscillations, four minutes, and 20 seconds after launch. The oxygen tank incident, 55 hours and 54 minutes into flight. The first issue was an unexpected anomaly when the second stage center engine shut down two minutes earlier than planned because of severe pogo oscillations. Pogo oscillations are a type of vibrational instability that happens in rocket engines. It's because of the interaction between the engine's thrust oscillations and the rocket's natural structural frequencies. The vehicle's guidance system could shut down the engine if it detected any chamber pressure issues, which is exactly what happened. Pogo oscillations are not a new issue and had been seen on Titan rockets and previous Apollo missions. However, they were more severe on Apollo 13 because it was amplified by turbo pump cavitation. This is because turbo pumps and rocket engines are responsible for pumping fuel and oxidizer into the combustion chamber. Cavitation occurs when the pressure in the pump falls below the vapor pressure of the liquid, causing vapor bubbles to form and then collapse. This process can lead to vibrations and potentially damage the pump. The most frustrating part is that a fix to prevent these pogo oscillations had already been developed, but wasn't integrated into Apollo 13 due to a tight schedule, pushing the phrase time is money out of existence. The four outboard engines in the third stage burned longer to compensate for the second stage engine shutdown. The second issue, and most significant, involved the oxygen tank. The spacecraft came very close to reaching the planned 190 kilometer orbit. Two hours later, they performed the translunar injection burn to set them on the path to the moon. Astronaut Jack Swigger carried out the separation and transposition maneuvers, docking the command service module with the lunar module before moving away from the third stage. The crew performed a burn to set Apollo 13 on a hybrid trajectory, meaning that if no more burns were done, the spacecraft would miss Earth on the way back. Jack Swigger had a moment of realization during the mission that he had forgotten to file his federal income tax return before the deadline. Frick taxes, right? This realization added a moment of humor to the mission. And after laughter from both Swigger and mission controllers, they discussed how he could get an extension. He was entitled to a 60-day extension because he was technically out of the country while on the mission. The crew was notified that the lunar module systems test would start three hours earlier. During this time, Lovell gave a TV tour of the command service module and lunar module. The broadcast had a small viewership because no TV networks covered it. 
The capsule communicator, also known as CAPCOM, is the person responsible for direct communication between the astronauts and mission control during a space mission. The term CAPCOM came from the earlier Mercury missions when astronauts flew in capsules. Jack Lusma was the CAPCOM for the mission and sent minor instructions to Swigger, including adjusting the spacecraft's altitude for photographing Comet Bennett. 95 seconds after Swigger activated the switches, a loud bang occurred, causing power fluctuations and triggering thrusters firing. Communication with Earth was lost for 1.8 seconds but was quickly restored by switching the antenna mode. At 55 hours, 54 minutes, and 53 seconds into the mission, Swigger reported to Houston. Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main beep on our boat. The guidance officer informed Flight Director Kranz about the issue. Lovell initially suspected Hayes had made the mistake, but Hayes was unaware of any problem. Swigger thought a meteoroid might have struck the spacecraft, but no leak was found. The investigation found that the explosion was a result of a series of mishaps. It started with a seemingly minor incident, when the oxygen tank was dropped just two inches during pre-flight handling. The slight jolt damaged an internal fill line, a problem that went unnoticed. Later, when the tank was modified to handle a higher voltage, the heater switches were not upgraded and were designed for 28 volts but exposed to 65 volts instead, causing the switches to malfunction and weld shut. During testing, the tank would not empty properly, so engineers decided to use the heater to boil off the excess oxygen, not realizing that this would cause the tank's temperature to skyrocket. The gauges, only able to measure up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit didn't show the true temperature inside, which soared to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, severely damaging the insulation on the electrical wires. When the crew performed a routine procedure to stir the tank's contents and ignited the highly flammable pure oxygen leading to an explosion. The main bus B undervolt indicated that there was low voltage from the service module's three fuel cells to the spacecraft's second power system. Soon, both power systems had low voltage, and two of the fuel cells were found to be dead. Mission rules required all fuel cells to be operational for lunar orbit insertion. Unusual readings showed that tank 2 was empty, tank 1's pressure was dropping, the computer had reset, and the high gain antenna wasn't working. At first, these signs were missed, and the issues were thought to be an instrumentation problem. Lovell then reported a gas of some sort was venting into space, which confirmed it was a serious problem. As oxygen tank 1 ran out, the remaining remaining fuel cell shut down, leaving only the command module's battery and oxygen surge tank for power on oxygen. Kranz ordered that the surge tank be isolated to conserve oxygen, but the fuel cell would still only last for about two more hours. Debris from the accident made star navigation difficult, so the mission's goal shifted to getting the astronauts back to Earth safely. The lunar module with its charged batteries and full oxygen tanks served as a lifeboat for the astronauts. This emergency procedure had been tested in the Apollo 10 simulation. If the accident had happened during the return journey or in lunar orbit, the astronauts would not have survived. Instead of using the service propulsion system for a direct abort due to possible damage, the spacecraft swung around the moon to head back to Earth. This change required new software for mission control. Lovell manually transferred guidance system data from the command module to the lunar module system. A descent propulsion system burn put Apollo 13 on a free return trajectory, aiming for a splashdown in the Indian Ocean, which was later adjusted to the Pacific Ocean. During the PC plus two burn, which means post command service module separation plus two hours burn, the crew made a key adjustment to Apollo 13's flight path. This burn was essential for putting the spacecraft on the correct trajectory to get back to Earth safely. The crew used the sun for navigation because of the debris. This burn was nearly perfect, lasting four minutes and 23 seconds, and most of the lunar module systems were turned off to save resources. The lunar module had plenty of oxygen, but not enough canisters to absorb CO2 for three astronauts. Engineers came up with a makeshift solution called the mailbox, which the crew put together using materials on the spacecraft to keep CO2 levels under control. All these temporary solutions weren't free though, there was consequences. To conserve power and water, the Apollo 13 crew had to make some tough choices. They limited their water supply to 0.2 liters per person per day, which led to a combined weight loss of 14 kilograms and caused Fred Hayes to develop a urinary tract infection. Inside the lunar module, the temperature fell to a cold 3 degrees Celsius. So Lovell and Hayes wore their lunar EVA boots while Swigger wore an extra coverall. 
The crew had to store their urine in bags to avoid disrupting the spacecraft's trajectory. They also managed condensation on the walls, which was a minor issue thanks to improved insulation. NASA engineer John Aaron and his team came up with a plan to power up the command module from a complete shutdown. At 133 hours into the mission, they powered up the lunar module to raise the cabin temperature, making it a bit more comfortable for the crew. They then performed a descent propulsion system burn to adjust the spacecraft's re-entry path. Finally, they jettisoned the service module, which revealed the extent of the damage it sustained. They reported that the entire service panel was missing from the service module's exterior. The fuel cells above the oxygen tank shelf were tilted and the high gain antenna was damaged there was also a significant amount of debris scattered around hayes could see potential damage to the engine bell which confirmed kranz's decision to avoid using the service propulsion system engineers also tackled the challenge of safely separating the lunar module and command module before re-entry apollo 13's re-entry resulted in a tense six minute communication blackout but ultimately it splashed down safely in the south pacific aside from hayes's infection the crew was in good condition. They were honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom awarded by President Nixon for their remarkable courage and teamwork. The Apollo 13 incident reignited global interest in the Apollo program, with millions of people turning in to watch the TV coverage from around the world. Four Soviet ships even headed to the landing area in case they were needed, and other countries offered to help as well. President Nixon canceled his appointments, reached out to the astronauts' families, and visited NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. This crisis brought the world together to support the astronauts and bring them safely perhaps even more than another successful moon landing might have this failed apollo mission was truly terrifying and shows just how dangerous space travel can be even after we had been to the moon twice before i hope we learn from all these mistakes and avoid taking shortcuts on something as important and as risky as space exploration what do you think let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe for more space stuff this video was recommended by a fan of the channel so shout out to you thank you for your ideas keep them coming thank you so much for watching and commenting i always read every single one and appreciate everything you say see you in the next one